Hi, I'm Claire and this is a Try A Chapter tag. I first saw this video over at Rachel's channel, Carla Nardi, and she also tagged me. So I will leave a link to her video in the description box below, as well as the original uh, creator of this tag. The idea for this tag is really simple. It's to take at least five books from your shelf that you've been meaning to read, give the first chapter a read and see how it goes, and then report back with thoughts on that chapter chapter and whether it makes you want to finish the book or not. I know some people have done more than five, but for me five is enough. The first book I have is Old Man's War by John Scalzi. This is one that I've been meaning to read for the longest time. Uh, I bought this copy when they released new UK editions with new covers and I really really love those. So uh, I've had this one and the second book on my shelf for a little while and I just I'm really curious to know um, if I'm going to enjoy it as much as some of Scorsese's other works because this was his debut novel so we'll see. Next I've got The Broken Sword by Paul Anderson. This is the only fantasy masterwork that I own and uh, I've picked this up after hearing about it on a podcast years ago quite literally. Basically the host was saying that uh, this was a book published around the same time as The Lord of the Rings and just as good but like pretty short. My third book is Karen Memory by Elizabeth Baer. I really wanted this edition uh, with this super nice illustration. I splurged a bit for the nice hardback and uh, this is uh, basically kind of western steampunky apparently which uh, made me think of Sherry Priest who I love and it's about a brothel as far as I know so um, that sounds cool. I've never read any Elizabeth Bear. I'm pretty excited about starting this one. Fourth is another book that I've owned for literally years and that is A Carpathia by Matt Fulbeck. I'm not sure that's the right way to pronounce the name of the ship but anyway I bought this because it looks really cool. Um, the cover, I don't know if you can see, is a picture of the Titanic sinking and it says the lucky ones went down with the Titanic. I remember being under the impression that this was a zombie book when I first bought it. I'm pretty sure it's actually a vampire book uh, but the concept of you know if you drowned in the Titanic you were lucky because if you didn't you find yourself on a ship full of monsters that go bump in the night is still quite interesting. And finally my last pick is a complete indulgence. It is Sorcerer to the Crown by Zen Cho. This is something I was definitely waiting for. I pre-ordered this and I still haven't uh, had time to read it so I definitely want to start it and I wanted to have something in there that was kind of my safe bet in case I didn't like any of the other books. So I hope it's not too much cheating to put this in. This is a Regency fantasy with a diverse cast and I'm so excited to read it. Thanks to the magic of video editing it's now a few days later and I have read all five of these books first chapters and I'm going to let you know what I've thought of these now. First we have The Broken Sword and for this one I read the first two chapters because they were each four pages long and I thought it wasn't unreasonable to have eight pages to kind of sample this 200 plus pages book. And I'm glad that I did because the first chapter focuses completely on a character called Orm who I would have thought was the main character if I hadn't read chapter two and it's clearly set up to be about Orm's son. Basically in the first couple chapters we see Orm establishing his life and being a good viking man except that he is being horrible to a bunch of people in so doing and he gets cursed. And clearly the rest of the book is going to be about the son having to deal with his father's uh, previous mistakes and bad behaviors. I've definitely found some humor in this book and it reads fairly quickly even though it's uh, written in a fairly archaic sort of language. It's just it felt different in a good way. It felt like something that I um, hadn't read over and over again and it does have Vikings so I'll definitely finish it. Next I read a sample of Carpathia and again for this one I read the first two chapters because the first chapter was only six pages long, the second chapter was only four pages long. This book has 67 chapters which seems a really really high number almost as if 
they were numbering the scenes instead of numbering the chapters. Only one woman mentioned who did not appear on the page. In the first chapter, we follow Quinn and his friend Abe when they are on the Titanic at the moment that it hits the iceberg and are kind of wondering what it could have been and they mentioned the fact that the ship is unsinkable, which felt very, very on the nose and kind of a bit annoying. I'm assuming Quinn is going to be the main character because his friend Abe was acting like the first person to die in a horror movie. So I'm assuming he's just gonna die first because he is too dumb to live anyway. I'm finding it a bit difficult to care about these characters because I know the ship is going to sink. I know that there's not enough lifeboats. I don't even know how they're going to make it to the other ship that's full of vampires. They probably would not have been prioritized for going on those lifeboats. So I'm kind of confused as to why I should get attached to them at all. And then the second chapter takes place on the Carpathia, the other ship, when they take the distress call from the Titanic. And it includes uh, one guy who's just a regular sailor and one guy who's clearly a vampire in disguise. And it teases some kind of power struggle between the vampire factions. And that was the only bit that really held my interest uh, at all. So I'm not sure that I'm going to keep reading this one. I did pick it up thinking it was about zombies so it's probably my fault for not reading the back properly and I've also had this for a few years now so now that I've given it a go and that I'm not a hundred percent about it I'm probably going to uh, give it away. Next we've got Old Man's War and this one I really really enjoyed. I think that's definitely going to be the one that I read next. In this first chapter, John Perry goes to register with the military and we get some interesting tidbits about his past, his background, his wife, his children. And we also establish the stakes, which are that he can never return to Earth if he leaves in the military. There's also bits of his contract with the military that are in the first chapter so that you kind of know what to expect later. So I thought the exposition worked really well in that way. And it also kind of showed off John Perry's character in fairly subtle ways, which made me feel like I definitely wanted to read more about this guy. He definitely seems like someone I want to invest time into reading about. He asks incisive questions, he reasons through the contract, he definitely comes across as a sharp person. At the very end of the first chapter, when he leaves the registration building, John remembers some information that he's been given earlier and makes a quick deduction about someone's birthday so that he can wish them a happy birthday, which is both a really nice thing to do that he didn't need to do at all, and also a smart thing because this person is probably going to be in space with him later and having to work with him. So it's nice to ingratiate himself to her as well. I wouldn't be surprised if this character turned out to be fairly witty later on in the book. And I'm definitely looking forward to finding out. This is going to be my next one on the TBR pile because just talking about it again now after having read the first chapter I just can't wait to get on with it. Next up was Care in Memory and this is something that I've been wanting to try out for a little while now and I was quite happy with this first chapter. It's not going to be next in my TBR pile but I definitely want to continue reading this. I really enjoyed the world building that was going on in that first chapter as well as various mentions of diverse characters and just uh, stakes being built. Again, there is someone getting shot in this chapter or having just gotten shot. So we kind of see the action starting to happen and it definitely feels like something I want to keep reading. The most striking thing about this book is the narrative voice. It's very, very specific. It's first person narration and it's got this kind of patter to it, this dialect almost. Like I said before, this takes place in a brothel. It's in a kind of historical steampunky wild west US town and whilst I really really enjoy the dialect and kind of pattern as being used in the narration it does mean that for me I have to focus a bit more when I'm reading this. I don't know if it would be the same with a native English speaker but for me I just have to focus on it and um, pay attention and maybe not read it 
before bed when I'm already tired. It's not difficult by any means uh, and it's really enjoyable for me as a language nerd but it's just maybe something that will take me a little bit longer to read. And finally I started Sorcerer to the Crown and this one has a prologue so I read that as well as the first chapter. It was about 20 pages all together. The prologue shows us an important event in the uh, main character's early life when he is first admitted to the Royal Society of Unnatural philosophers when he is something like six years old and has to demonstrate his magic in front of all these fusty wizards. And then in the first chapter you meet him again 18 years later when he's just been made Sorcerer Royal. We've got some high society gossip, some intrigue, a ghost, some secrets that are being teased. I thought it was a really interesting first chapter and I definitely want to keep reading this one but like Karen Memory I think it's one that I'm going to have to pay specific attention to when I'm reading it because it's just got a bit of a more formal language to the writing of this. It's a fantasy of manor and it's set in a kind of Regency England and so because of that the language is just a bit more formal which I enjoy by the way it's just that sometimes it's a bit more difficult to read and I have to pay a bit more attention. And this cover is of course the shiniest cover that has ever existed. But yes, this is another one that I want to continue but maybe not straight away. So that's it, this was the first chapter's tag. Let me know in the comments below if you've read any of those books. If you'd like to see more from me, you can check the sidebar right here for more videos. And if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button for new videos from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching and see you soon.